For many years, the house on the hill was a dream for the old pharmacist. When the house was finished and the furniture moved in, the new owner decided to spend the first night sitting by the fire and rocking in his chair and smoking his pipe. He hadn't any more than lighted his pipe till he heard a strange sound. It was a sound he hadn't heard for a long time, like the rolling of carriage wheels and the clippity-clop of horses' hooves. But be before he could do anything about that, he heard another sound coming from the garden. It was the sound of digging. He grabbed his big flashlight and ran to the garden window and opened it. There was nothing. He said to himself on the way back to the chair, oh, couldn't be the wind because this is a quiet winter night and I've just trimmed the branches around the house that would brush it. Huh. Must be my imagination. But he hadn't any more than taken another puff till there was another sound. And this time, it was the sound of men's footsteps. Not just one man, but several men coming up the cellar steps. He grabbed the poker and ran to the cellar door and opened it. Blackness. Nothing. No one. Maybe my imagination is playing tricks on me. He sat back in the chair and began puffing on his pipe again. There were no other sounds for a while. Finally, he got drowsy and went to sleep. Then there was a big sound, a big crash, like rocks coming out of the ceiling from sacks and dropping on the floor. He got up and switched on the light and looked. Everything was just as he had left it. No hole in the ceiling. Nothing on the floor. This happened for a week. The same sounds every day, every night. Finally, he decided to sell the house. And he drove into town to do it. And when he got back to the house, he found that it was burned completely to the ground. Ghost stories. Now, North Carolina story. has hundreds. <laughs> Why are they still around, and where did they come from? Ghost stories are part of our tradition. When I was a little boy, my grandfather used to tell me stories all the time. I remember he used to sit by the fireplace, and he'd tell me ghost stories and scare me half to death. And then, when my kids were little, I used to tell them the same stories. Now my grandchildren. And they get just as scared as I did when I heard them the first time. Pat a cake, pat a cake, baker's man. Bake me a cake as fast as you can. Roll it and toss it and mark it with B and put it in the oven for a baby and me. Pat a cake, pat a cake, baker's man. Bacon Traditions are things cake handed cake down cake from cake parents cake to children and then to the children's children. Things passed from generation to generation. One, two, three, four, five. Sound familiar? We first hear traditional rhymes and songs when we are very young. Later on, we use these sayings ourselves. The early bird always gets the worm. A doctor a day keeps the apple away. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Two heads are better than one. Don't count chickens before the hatch. Some of our traditions are rhymes and games. She walks so slow, she met her bus. She took her to a picture show. How many kisses did he give her? One, two, I put my right foot in. I take my right foot out. I give my right foot a shake, 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 and turn myself about. Oh, here we go, Louie, Louie. Here we go, Louie, Louie. Here we go, Louie, Louie. 
When our great, 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 great grandparents came to North Carolina, they brought their traditions with them. These traditions were passed from place to place and from person to person. Sometimes a song or a story changed a little as it was passed along, or a new song or story might be made up. Songs helped to pass the time while someone was working. If the work was fast, the song was fast. If the work was slow, so was the song. Some made up songs were about things that really happened. Some of North Carolina's old stories have been made into plays. One play tells the story of the lost colony. It was the time of the corn harvest when we arrived, and the friendly Indians were giving thanks unto their God. This is the first English child to be born in the New World, and here, God willing, beginneth a new nation. In this hour, no ships shall leave England for the colony. Gentlemen, a Spanish armada is set to sail against us. And now, to arms. God save us. This means the end of the colony. It will die. And down the centuries that wait ahead, there'll be some whisper of our name, some mention and devotion to the dream that brought us here. And now, into the hand of God, we commend us. Traditions are still part of our lives. But today, we learn about many of these traditions by watching television. Some of us spend more time watching television than we spend talking to other people. Of course, when I was a little boy, we didn't have television. But my dad and some of the older people around used to tell us kids some great stories. I remember going on a hunting trip with my dad, and he'd tell me those old Jack tales. That Jack was always getting into something. Of course, I like to read good stories, too. And we used to love to sing and dance. We'd all get together at the community house and have big dances. The first time I met my wife was at one of those dances. I thought she was the prettiest girl I'd ever seen. And later, we got a radio, which was a miracle in those days all kinds of music, stories, and then, of course, television and more entertainment. My grandchildren have seen television ever since they were tiny. I reckon they think television has been around forever. But you know, my grandson still likes to sit up on my lap and hear me tell stories. Bring a piece of coarse sand paper, please. Not all our traditions are spoken or sung. Some are things we do with our hands, crafts. These crafts are also passed down from parents to children. Thank you. Crafts are harder to learn than songs or stories. Like playing the piano or flying a plane, learning a craft takes time and it takes skill to do these things well. Why were crafts started? 
and why do people still do craft work? A craft used to begin when people needed something, and the only way they could get it was to make it themselves. The first people in North Carolina needed jugs and bowls. They couldn't buy these things, but they could find clay and make their own. Today, people in North Carolina still carry on the traditional craft of pottery making. People have always needed furniture, and our area has always had many forests. So early people used wood from these forests to make their furniture. Later, furniture would be made in factories. But some craftsmen still build furniture the traditional handmade way. Early North Carolinians had to make most of the things they needed, and almost all these things were made at home. Families don't have to make their own quilts anymore, but some people still enjoy the craft of quilt making. A hundred years ago, many people in North Carolina spun wool and cotton into thread, dyed the thread, and then used a hand loom to weave the thread into cloth. Some people still weave cloth on a hand loom, using the same designs and patterns their great-great-grandparents used. Today, most cloth is made on machines, in huge factories. What used to take a craftsman months to make, now can be produced in minutes. Most of the things we use today are sold in stores, and the things we buy are the same things early people had to make themselves. Should we weave cloth for towels and sheets? Should we make our own furniture instead of buying it in a store? Because we don't need to make these things, some of the old crafts are disappearing. But we are learning about other crafts in new ways. Now we don't need to make furniture or quilts or weave our own cloth, but we do want to know how these things can be done by hand. We want to make things for ourselves. We want to learn the stories and songs our grandparents learned. We want to know about traditions. <laughs> 